Joining us now is Council of Economic Advisors Chairman Jared Bernstein. Jared, this should all be great news. Lower prices at the pump, consumers are still spending, the stock market is up with the Dow touching all-time highs, and yet there's this disconnect from the message that the Biden administration is trying to spread about things are good and how a lot of people seem to be feeling and feeling about the president's performance in this arena. Well, I actually think that's not that hard to square, John. Uh, we're moving in the right direction. We're doing it with some speed, uh, but we've got more work to do. As you correctly pointed out, we've got the tailwind of a very strong job market uh, behind the American consumer. And we have a 70 percent consumer economy. So if you have a tight labor market, if you have easing inflation, OK, down two thirds off of its peak. And now we're seeing actual price declines from from uh, eggs to apples, from TVs to toys, uh, sporting goods, airfares, car rentals lower prices in those areas. So more work to do, uh, but on the right path. A year ago, I was hearing people say, oh, nobody wants to work anymore. Small businesses can't stay open. People are too satisfied with their built up pandemic stimmy check savings. Now, I guess businesses are open because consumers seem to be spending. So in your and the Biden administration's estimation, what is it that people are feeling so unsettled about? Do you get it? Well, first of all, let's talk about this uh, graveyard of inaccurate negative memes that you just took us through. Uh, the great resignation has uh, uh, morphed into uh, a, a very strong uh, labor supply, labor force participation up uh, at recently at record rates, uh, especially for uh, prime age workers and especially for women. Uh, some uh, outlets told us we were facing 100 percent probability of recession. Uh, we are uh, quite far from that, uh, as uh, the data that we've been discussing shows and certainly as the Fed reflected yesterday. Uh, so, uh, again, when you look at the work that this White House is doing, and you latch that up to what people are dealing with uh, in these uh, uh, sentiment indices, the fact that they need more breathing room, uh, you see that uh, th this president is working uh, very hard at directly that problem, trying to lower the cost of prescription drugs, and in fact, accomplishing that through legislation that's currently being implemented, lowering the price of insulin, lowering the price of uh, medicines, going after junk fees, you know, urging corporations, look, if you've saved prices on your input costs because uh, we helped unsnarl those supply chains, pass those savings along to consumers. So we're going to continue to fight for breathing room for American families uh, and to build on the actual price declines we've seen on sporting goods, on toys, on computers, on TVs, mm -hmm. on appliances, and so on. That's the right path. We're actually starting to see some improvements in some corners of those confidence indices, especially the UMISH in its most recent release. Uh, we did see that. And, and certainly we've seen this pace of disinflation uh, pick up speed and be very dramatic this year. Jared, I'm just curious about this last mile of inflation, because historically it tends to be the stickiest. And we do have fiscal policies in place, uh, whether it is onshoring, whether it is infrastructure, or IRA, whether it is some of the immigration, mm -hmm. legal immigration policies that are in place. How much do those, and I ask this as investors and economists have come on our air and talked about this, how much do those potentially contribute to a structurally higher pace of inflation? Well, I would probably push back in the following sense. When you have increasing labor supply, as we've just talked about, by the way, the Fed uh, references that as well. When you have uh, rental prices that came down, say, six to 12 months ago and are entering the consumer price index with a lag because of the way it's constructed, when you have perhaps most importantly unsnarled supply chains in some recent work that CEA did, we think that uh, up to 80 percent of the disinflation is related to the unsnarling of supply chains. You know, goods core goods prices have been uh, uh, flatlining for a while now. Uh, I think you can count on inflation to continue to ease, and that certainly is the dominant forecast. So that would be, that would be our outlook from, uh, from uh, the perspective of where we think that's headed. And of course, mm -hmm. that is, that is the, the, the modal forecast, whether you're talking about market forecasters or the Fed. Yeah, and of course, uh, the Fed chair did talk about that supply side. Uh, yesterday in his presser. I want to shift gears a little bit because we had we had a moment in D.C. and that was the NDAA, this national defense policy bill, mm. $886 billion defense policy bill that represents a 3 percent increase year over year uh, in spending on defense, actually made its way through Congress 
today. Is this a right. sign that some of this legislative gridlock is now going to ease? I certainly hope so, and I'm really glad you raised that because it it is a sign that people can uh, put their heads together and uh, shake hands on things that they agree on. And so, <laughs> look, there's a lot of stuff uh, uh, members uh, disagree on up there, but when it comes to support for the measures in the supplemental, particularly, of course, I'm talking about Ukraine and Israel, there is broad, widespread agreement. So, getting out of uh, out of their own way and actually getting that stuff off the legislative goal line, it's a good sign, and perhaps uh, it is a motivator to uh, continue to make bipartisan progress in that regard.